logical fallacies. I'll be honest, I get a little annoyed with the fallacy talk sometimes. Some people, they can't debate substance, so they act pedantic and they fallacy snipe, as if, as if that means they win. Oh, if I can prove that he affirmed the consequent, then that means that uh, that person is wrong. The point of identifying logical fallacies is not to prove your opponent wrong. A fallacious argument doesn't make your argument false. However, knowing how to identify a fallacious argument can show how the argument that your interlocutor is making is either not valid or not guaranteed to be sound. So here's an example, affirming the consequent, like I said a little bit ago. It looks like this. If X, then Y. Y, therefore, X. X is the antecedent. It comes before Y. So Y is a consequence of X. Firming the consequent is when you say Y happens because of X. Just because Y happens as a result of X doesn't mean that Y is always caused by X. For example, if it is raining outside, then the ground will be wet. The ground is wet, therefore it is raining. No, there are other causes. However, rain is still a possibility. It's actually a pretty good possibility in general. In this series, I will plan on covering just one fallacy at a time. I will try to give examples of it in everyday life, not just in the science content that I typically cover. And then I'm also going to do my best to explain why each fallacy is used, because they do come natural to us. Most people, they don't set about to argue fallaciously on purpose. So we need to understand where this is coming from so that we can be introspective. The purpose is to make you a better thinker. Knowing and understanding, those are different things. And our goal here is to understand. So with all of that in mind, we are going to get started with- Did you tell them about the thing? What thing? Oh, right, yeah. My merch store is back up. Okay, links in the description. Today's fallacy is the ad hominem attack, which literally means against the man. So this is when you attack the person making the argument instead of the argument itself. Hilariously enough, I wrote the entire script for this video, had the concept for it, like I said, did all the writing. Then I checked TikTok really quick and I saw this. I made a video announcing I was debating Kent Hovind yesterday and somebody stitched it just to do an ad hominem attack. How, how perfect is this? Some common examples. In politics, you would hear something like, oh, of course you want higher taxes. You're lazy and entitled and you just want handouts. Remember these? Joe and the ho gotta go. Attacking somebody based on their identity or their appearance, that is almost always an ad hominem attack. We never call it that. You know, we have labels for those. Racist, misogynistic, whatever, phobic. But they are ad hominem attacks. Although we'll see later that they can be labeled something else. In sports, there is a 100% certainty that somebody on the other team will be called a bitch. Not enough attention is paid to how the psychology of sports fans is exactly like hyperpartisanism. Some other common things are, I don't know, uh, you got a problem with a strong independent woman or something. Do you literally think that shows like South Park, comedians like you're, Bill Burr, Louis C.K., do you on. think that they aren't funny? Listen, there's a chance that you are like Louis C.K. in the sense you go around exposing yourself to women, but you're not as funny as Louis C.K. Well, Irish. So when you're... Okay, you're can, you, can you unprejudice yourself so from your so emotional baggage and just consider no the actual bag. argument? Hang on, sweetheart, there's no emotional baggage. You're siding... Oh, yes, there is. You're literally taking comedians. this personally. You, you are siding like trained professional mind? comedians and asking, do I find them funny? Yes, I find them funny because okay. The then you think trained. that jokes that have like racial themes to them can be funny? Because he's got the talent and the skill to be able to execute. But it's a, but what he said is offensive. You can't evoke Bill Burr and Eddie Murphy and Louis C.K. 
to protect you from making those same jokes because you don't have the skill that they have. Something I hear pretty common is, you atheists, you just hate God. So you peddle the Big Bang Theory. Or we get called devil worshippers and things like that. Perhaps the most common ad hominem fallacy is what I guess is called Godwin's Law. Whenever you're arguing somebody with the internet, the longer the conversation goes on, the odds of somebody being compared to a Nazi approaches 100%. The Hitler card is probably the most common ad hominem attack. They kicked so-and-so off of Twitter. That's a fascism. Restricting immigration? Nazi. Gun restrictions? Well, you know who did that? That's right, the Nazis. Atheism is fundamentally immoral. You could argue so, it's amoral, but not immoral. So, so here's the thing. On what basis are you more moral than a Nazi? So everything they believed in was literally false. So if you're going to try to base some sort of meta ethics on things that literally aren't true, then it's not rational and it can't possibly be the grounding for anything. A common tactic that is an ad hominem sleight of hand is to nitpick your interlocutor to death. Pick a word they said and ask them to give the definition for that word right now. Or just pull something out of thin air and just say, oh, do you know what this is? Could you define it for us? Debate bros desperately try to see if they can get you to say, I don't know about one thing so that they can pretend you're an idiot or you don't know what you're talking about. Darth Dawkins did this with me. He was saying some bullshit about evolution being false, and I was explaining to him how that's not the case, and he interrupted to say, do you know, on average, how many amino acids are required to make a protein? And I, uh, I googled it real quick, and he said, oh, so you don't know off the top of your head? I thought you were supposed to be some kind of expert on this. This is a little bit of a tangent, but... We have this thing where we think that rote memorization, which is just to be able to recall facts, is like a, a marker of intelligence, and it isn't. I already said this at the beginning. Knowing and understanding are different things. I've seen debates where somebody, they recall the chapter and the page and which corner of the page a certain quote happens in a book, and people in the audience are just like, oh, 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 he's such a genius. Like, as if that means anything. This also happened in this evolution debate I had with a philosophy guy. He kept, he was using this terminology that's really confusing, intentionality versus... I don't even remember the other thing. And he kept saying, evolution isn't intentional or whatever because it can't do X, Y, or Z. And then I would explain to him, well, no, evolution, natural selection actually does account for that through these mechanisms. And then in the middle of my description, I got interrupted countless times. Do you know, do, do you know the difference between intentional and blah, blah, blah? And I kept saying... No, I'm really confused about that, but you're telling me it can't do this, and I'm explaining to you how it can. And, I, I don't know, all the attacks against me rested on me not knowing what this really esoteric vocabulary was. The ad hominem attack is extremely common. It's probably the most common fallacy that you hear. The only thing that can rival it, I think, is the red herring, which, if you've ever watched a presidential debate, the only thing they do is our red herrings. They, they never answer any questions. So why are ad hominem attacks so common? Well, I think it's because a debate is you versus someone else. I pointed this out in the Charlie Kirk versus liberals video that I made. People go into debates with the full intention of just making the other person look bad. They... It's not just that this other person is wrong and I disagree with them. They are a bad person. And so all I want to do is put them in their place. People care more about getting them than they care about being right and what the truth is. And so you create the illusion of winning a debate by scoring cheap points and making the audience laugh or clap along with you. We are deeply tribal and appealing to our emotions 
as in going after the out group, that is extremely effective. This kind of tribal thinking is so powerful that it makes people incapable of realizing what they're doing. In my first debate with Kent Hovind, he concluded his opening statement by saying that I'm okay with people fucking their dog. I countered that by saying tax cheats and wife beaters have no right to morally grandstand. Now, I went and looked at his upload of our debate on his channel, and oh my goodness, his viewers, they simply could not believe that I would say such a thing. It's only wrong if the opponent does it. Now, there's this question of, is the ad hominem attack ever justified? And, I mean, how is a fallacious argument ever justified? Well, I mean, it never is. But the ad hominem, for the reasons I gave earlier, is so powerful because, again, a debate is you versus the other person. And people think that, you know, I there are certain people who are infamous and people think they shouldn't be debated. Kent Hovind, I guess, is is one of them. But there are many others where... The critiques of the debate afterwards go something like, I can't believe you didn't bring up how he or she has done X, Y, or Z. Well, okay, but if that has nothing to do with the conversation, then why would we do that? In a news interview, I suppose that that probably makes perfect sense, but, you know, in a debate, not necessarily. As I was editing this video, I thought of another example that I think is okay to use. And that would be like, for example, you're arguing with somebody and they're being completely childish and immature and emotional. And you say to them, you're being emotional. That's not an ad hominem attack. Now, it absolutely could be if somebody just said like, well, you're a woman, so you aren't capable of thinking objectively or something like that. Then that's fallacious, but not necessarily. Now, one thing is people say, it's not an ad hominem attack if it's true. That's not how it works. If what you're saying is true, but it has nothing to do with what your interlocutor is saying, with them being wrong about something, well, then don't do it. However, don't be afraid to point out hypocrisy. So, like, here's a, here's a hypothetical political debate. You don't care about the hardworking people who have been left behind in this country. Well, you voted against Bill 12345 that would have benefited those people. Here's me doing this exact same sort of thing to Kent. Well, he keeps saying we, we, we. Is he, is he actually doing this stuff? You no, know, the question is, does that evidence exist? So it, you don't have credentials either, Kent. So don't sit here and be like, oh, have you done any scientific tests? Here we go with the ad hominem. I knew that was coming. Okay, uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, I was looking You're for allowed to say, Mr. Peterson, you don't do science. You're not a scientist either. When I bring that up, it's an ad hominem attack. What do you mean I don't do science? What do you mean do science? Science means knowledge. How do you do knowledge? Hopefully you enjoyed that. Like my evil twin was talking about earlier, uh, I do have merch again now. I have a Patreon. I have Discord. Check those things out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.